Thank you for the introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Uh, we hope this is um, our second meeting with you, our second online meeting with you. And um, as our journey towards the new IP continues, uh, we'd like to give you a sneak preview into what Brocade is doing on the new IP. So here goes. A quick recap on what we discussed last time. For those who attended our last session, the slide will look familiar. So the new IP is, is what is there today but if you you need to understand how the evolution happened how the transition happened from where we were to where we are today so we started off with an infrastructure of mainframes personal computers and an architecture which was very proprietary to the extent that even a protocol such as IP was not common across infrastructure uh, there were multiple protocols run by multiple vendors and each had its own solution. It was very hard for a business to encompass a multi-vendor environment and actually run their businesses smoothly, react to the transitions in their market smoothly. So then came the 90s where uh, we call the, the, the entrance of the second platform, which is the client-server architecture and uh, pervasive IP. So all applications uh, having an IP as an infrastructure allowed applications to move towards um, a mobile world, move towards a standard LAN-WAN architecture, and the pervasiveness of the internet, internet prevalence um, to a large extent, especially in, uh, especially in countries like ours. And then uh, today is uh, a whole new transformation the number of devices that are on the network, the infrastructure moving to uh, the concept of cloud, moving to concept of private, a uh, combo of private and public cloud, and um, the kind of, the number of people who are going to be on the network. So the whole paradigm has shifted. And in order to enable businesses to take advantage of uh, cloud infrastructure to take advantage of their customers being on mobile, being on social platforms, it is necessary that the infrastructure is able to maintain that kind of agility. And that's where the third platform comes in. So the new IP enables this big transition from the client server architecture to the cloud mobile social and analytics driven architecture. So that's what the new IP is about. So that was a quick primer on that. Now, moving on to how new IP helps and what are the, what are the uh, pillars of the new IP, if you will. So, what, what, uh, the way the technology was um, uh, in the 90s and the tenets of the technology back then closed, proprietary. The only common thing was, okay, everyone had started using the IP protocol. Hardware was proprietary. Um, configurability was uh, very much uh, limited to the vendor who created the infrastructure. Innovation was slow. Cost was definitely high because of the proprietary nature of uh, uh, the, the whole architecture. And security was kind of slapped on at the end, you know, add a firewall here, add, add, add uh, network access control. It was, it was pushed onto the network. But with the new IP, we need to drive a whole new network architecture. We need to drive new business models. Being able to react to demands on the go. Being able to react to business changes as they happen. And for that to happen, what changes do we require in the infrastructure? We require an open architecture. We require uh, very simple hardware. We require automation. So automation is, is something you're going to listen to throughout this webinar. Very important to not make any infrastructure complicated. There's absolutely no need to. The, the network should come up in an automated way. It should be uh, have the ability to come at an extremely low cost so as to enable rapid innovation. The customer should not have to wait four and five days to bring up any network element. They should happen, they should come in on demand. And pervasive security. Security should be enableable throughout the infrastructure. 
So these are the technology tenets of the new IP. So now in today's webinar, we're going to go uh, slightly deeper into what Brocade has to offer as part of the new IP and give you that sneak preview and show you that these tenets of having an open architecture, having the capability to automate at various layers in the network, having uh, the ability to enhance rapid innovation, and at absolutely no cost of security, is what Brocade has to offer as part of its solutions. So here's um, a big picture of the areas in which Brocade as a company today participates and has solutions. Um, as we were introduced, we are the, the uh, godfathers of storage networking. Uh, that, is, that is something that Brocade has been doing for the past 20 years. But over the last 10 years, we have also grown in the switching and routing space, in the IP space. We are uh, driving and we are pioneering in the software-based virtualization and control space in the analytics space, the capability to derive useful information from the network, and believe me, the network sees everything. So the ability to get that information, analyze it, and make sense of it. The ability to enable mobile networking at a fraction of today's cost, and wireless with our Ruckus acquisition. So a whole portfolio really reverberating the same message, the new IP, automation, agility, and quicker time to market. So let's start with the portfolio of fabrics. Fabrics, in essence, is defined as the shortest way to get from one end of the network to the other, right? To reach uh, one host to another element. Fabric will find the, the easiest way to reach another element. Now, the concept of fabric was started with the storage area networking. So, Brocade has a portfolio of fabrics, as you can see. We started off with the storage area networking or the SAN fabric. We have huge success in the SAN fabric, being market leaders. We have uh, a layer 2 fabric, which is the VCS fabric or the virtual cluster switching fabric. We have the IP fabric. We have the IP storage fabric. As you see, more and more adoption of um, flash storage. We see a lot of adoption of IP storage as well uh, in terms of fabric connectivity. And then we also were the first to pioneer fabric in the campus with our campus fabric. So the commitment of automation, uh, the commitment of quickest time to market is very prevalent in the way Brocade has created um, the pervasive concept of fabrics throughout the network from data center to campus. Let's talk a little bit about how data centers have evolved from where they were back in the early 90s to where they are now. Typical three-tier architecture of access, aggregation, and core. Then moving to a scale out layer two fabric architecture. So this allows you to grow in a way that the traffic which is traversing east-west and not in and out of the data center, but within the data center, is the most efficiently treated. And why is that important? Because remember, in 2015 to 2020, the technology that's taking off, social, mobile, cloud, and analytics. Analytics requires a lot of inter-app communication, which is traffic between servers in your data center. So your network has to be optimized to allow the most efficient way for these applications to talk to each other to quickly derive analytics. These analytics when up to data coming in from social networking can drive marketing campaigns, can really drive the business much faster. So again, something as basic as a fabric in the data center can help you drive your business and is very much in line with the new IP. The overlays on this type of fabrics is um, our, our partners, uh, VMware, who have their NSX portfolio. And we also have the option of using uh, virtual fabrics, which allows you to scale out much more than the current VLAN limitation of 4,000. Then there is the IP fabric, a fabric for huge service provider type deployments, uh, large e-commerce companies. 
companies where um, we are talking about multiple hundred thousands of servers. Procade also has the layer 3 or the IP fabric and um, basic open uh, compliant architectures with the standards as well as the capability to program is what uh, is present in Brocade's layer 3 fabric. So layer 3 fabric or layer 2 fabric or any fabric from Brocade, the three tenets are architectural flexibility the ability to use whichever fabric at whatever point in the network depending on the customer size and the customer business. The ability to bring up these fabrics within minutes, the ability to add a switch or ports or a server on demand without any disruptive actions, turnkey automation. And then the last is the programmability. We keep on talking about having an open architecture and this is something intrinsic to Brocade where open source is part and part of our DNA. The fact that our controllers, as you will see later on in this presentation, our SDN controllers are based on open source. The programmability of these fabrics can be done via standard uh, programming interfaces such as NetConf with the Yang model. You can program uh, Python scripts on the fabric to enable interactions with your current IT infrastructure. So absolutely open programming interfaces which allows you to integrate your network infrastructure with your business and quickly react to business demands. Then a quick uh, view into the software networking portfolio. Remember that today uh, as businesses adopt network function virtualization, which is again a big tenet of the new IP. The ability to bring up network elements without having the need to depend on someone else's hardware. The ability to not give up on performance or throughput and not give up on security at a fraction of the cost is what network function virtualization actually realizes for your businesses. What does Brocade have to offer in this area? First is our software-defined networking controller, or SDN controller. The SDN controller has the ability to program networking elements with an open protocol, which is OpenFlow version 1.3. This is based on a consortium of open daylight and hence has the support of various organizations. This not only allows um, you to have the ability to program your network, it also allows you to go with a multi-vendor environment. So you can choose best in breed for each location in the network. So let's look into um, these three products in Brocade software networking portfolio. The virtual router from Brocade. Um, so this is, this is, um, uh, this is pioneering of Brocade in the router space, the ability to create um, connectivity to the internet within a matter of minutes. It was something none of us could even think of 10 years ago, 5 years ago. But today with network function virtualization, a simple x86 uh, off-the-shelf server, you will have the ability to connect your campus, your data center to the internet within a matter of minutes at a fraction of the cost without giving up any uh, throughput. If you look at the slide, I'm, I, have, I have told you about 80 gig line rate with a single V router. So a virtual router giving 80 gig line rate is, is practically unheard of. And the reason Brocade can claim that today is because of the use of um, Intel's DPDK. So pioneering in the network function virtualization space without giving up on what you're used to today with proprietary hardware is what Brocade's V-Router allows you to do. Next is the SDN controller. As I said, the ability to uh, program your network and allow business flows, business workflows to be mapped to how the network should behave. And we'll talk about a couple of examples in the space. But the takeaway from this slide is it is the Brocade's SDN controller is your bridge to the open daylight community. You're not being locked in with any one, any one vendor 
because you are using a software defined networking controller which has the ability to program a multi-vendor environment. So here's an example of where these products typically sit in, um, in networks. On the left side of the slide, we have shown uh, the branch router being part of an Amazon cloud. So if there is a campus that requires a secure tunnel into the Amazon cloud, Amazon can instantiate the vRouter. You can, you as a customer can install your vRouter in your Amazon uh, workspace and have a secure tunnel from your campus. Uh, the next product we were going to talk about is the application delivery controller. The application delivery controller is a solution which provides load balancing, which provides web application firewall, security at the, at the web layer, and the ability to optimize web pages. This again in a virtualized manner. So the ability to bring up load balancers on demand is not only something a cloud service provider can use to provide services, also within the enterprise private cloud, a virtual load balancer can add immediate value and reduce your application installation time from hours to minutes because you can inst install the load balancer at any location within the data center without being limited by the location of the hardware, the kind of interfaces it has. You just use your existing servers. So what we saw as benefits of NFV is something I want to reiterate. NFV again is network function virtualization. The ability to automate. You can scale services up and down. So Brocade's application delivery controller, for example, is uh, bandwidth driven. When you, when you procure a, a license from Brocade for the application delivery controller, you can split that into multiple instances instances of 10 Mbps or more and hence have the ability to scale up a load balancer from 10 Mbps to 1 gig to 2 gig within a matter of minutes. So literally scale uh, on demand. To give you an example, um, let's say you're an e-commerce business and you have a sale going on for Diwali or Christmas and for that amount of time you need um, your applications to perform optimally and hence you need a more powerful load balancer, let's say a 5 gig load balancer. But in normal, in normal circumstances, for no sale days, you're good with a 1 gig load balancer. The ability to create, add more CPU and RAM to an existing 1 gig load balancer such that during the sales time, the sale time, Christmas Diwali again, you can go from 1 gig to 5 gig scale your business on demand. That is exactly what network function virtualization allows you to do. Flexible and elastic deployment options. Do you want to deploy in the cloud? Do you want to deploy in, in your private or public cloud? Do you want to deploy on um, a bare metal server? You have a choice of flexible deployment. You can move these network functions. When did you ever um, have the ability to move a router or a load balancer from location A to location B without having to do paperwork, permissions. Today, with network function virtualization, the VM can be moved um, across the WAN, across the data center without paperwork involved. So it really changes the game and it really changes the way business is run. Efficiency. Efficiency because of extremely low power consumption. Moving from proprietary hardware to a virtualized form allows you to use your standard servers in the data center. So immediately you have reduced utilization of rack space, you've reduced utilization of heat and power consumption in your data center. So efficiency again enabled by NFV, again a big tenet of the new IP. Migration coexistence with existing platforms. So compatibility, the presence of existing platforms with NFV, absolutely non-disruptive. And business. It reduces costs in the business, but more importantly, it allows you to drive your business extremely efficiently and extremely quickly. So reducing your time to market, you're increasing your speed to market at a lower cost. Win-win, always. So 
to summarize about what Brocade is doing in the new IP space, allowing you as a business to transform to where, from where you are today to the new IP, Brocade participates in multiple areas, as you can see, starting from the data center all the way to the edge of the network. Whether we talk about mobile networking, Brocade has an offering of uh, a virtual evolved packet core, which is the packet core of the 4G network. Brocade offers uh, wireless today in campuses as well as in the service provider space uh, with its Ruckus portfolio, Ruckus wireless portfolio. All this in a way where you have a choice of using a virtualized network function. Brocade offers um, the ability to learn from your network, to understand what's happening in your network with the analytics acquisition of VistaPoint. So an ability to harness important information from your network and use it to drive business decisions. Brocade also supports um, a large software networking portfolio with its virtual router, virtual application delivery controller, and the SDN controller. We spoke about these uh, in length. Obviously, contact us later after the webinar to understand more about these products. And then the fabrics. So we spoke about the fabrics both in the data center as well as in the campus. Fabrics are something which has, has been built over time by Brocade's engineering team, starting with storage networking. We understand that the data center houses your most important asset as a business, which is your data. It could be your customer data. It could be business data. But it's the most important asset you have as a business. How do I ensure it is accessible, it is accessible securely, and it is accessible at the lowest cost. That is where fabrics come into the picture. So whether it is connecting your storage to your servers or your servers to the gateway of the internet, Brocade has the solution for you in the data center as well as in the campus. So with that, I conclude my presentation and I'll hand it back uh, to the ET team. Hi, um, Akanksha, anyone there from the ET team? Hello? Yeah, I, I can hear you stuff now. OK, great. So I think we're ready for questions now. Yes, we are giving. Okay, uh, I, I do see a question. Hi, this is Gopesh. Uh, so the question is how the fabric works from overall architecture point of view. So to, uh, to give you an explanation, like in today's time, most, mostly how network were being built, we used to buy uh, each box is like if you're buying uh, tons of switches, and each switch has an individual personality, right? They need to be configured, configured, and they have to maintain, you know, a whole 
management operations was uh, based on the per boxes one and in order to make all of these boxes talk together there were some protocols like that that needs to be again configured by the end user and then the only the traffic will start flowing between the two devices now when we introduced uh, the concept of fabric the whole point was instead of treating all these uh, yeah all these devices as individual and discreetly, is it possible to logically make them look like one network, right? Instead of having like 100 switches, I have 100 touch points, 100 configuration, 100 upgrade points. So we just want to make them look like one and that's where the concept of fabric came in. All the devices behave as if they are a logical single entity. And what we made it uh, easier for, uh, for our end user is, the communication protocols which were required for these two devices to start you know forwarding the traffic we have automated those protocols so it doesn't require users a user intervention to make these you know two devices work together all that we expect is they bring two devices they connect them via cable the system recognizes itself and they start looking like a logically single box so you have one entity logical entity to manage one logical entity to upgrade, downgrade operationally. Everything has been like a single logical. Still, they are physically discrete, but the whole systems look like as it's virtually one network. And that's the fabric of concept. Uh, the concept of the fabric is all the it's just single unit that needs to be configured and managed so that's the concept of uh, of uh, fabric okay uh, there's a question like uh, uh, and uh, just to uh, let you know we, we don't have infinite band switches so uh, we are more on the Ethernet side of the world, and we we really don't have any infinity bands because we figured out that infinity band was a very niche case, and we didn't want to be in that uh, segment. So we believe Ethernet is evolving, and it's evolving at a much much faster rate. So there would be time when we'll be able to catch up with infinity band speeds. So. Okay. Um, so I think the next question is about can you talk about market competition for brocade and the corresponding counter strategies for the future? So um, the market competition for brocade, yes, there are um, uh, there are a few um, competitors in the space. What Brocade really differentiates is on um, the tenets of the new IP, as I said. Automation is something we built in, starting with storage area networks. So the first um, entry of automation into the networking space was started by Brocade. Now, uh, the automation is pervasive in all our fabrics when it comes to our Ethernet fabric, which is the VCS fabric, as well as the IP fabric, the bring up of the fabric, as Gopesh was saying, is absolutely automated. There is no expectation that each and every switch, when added, has to be configured. It happens um, immediately and, and automated in an automated way without any human involvement. Gopesh, you want to take the next question? Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. So uh, let me. Uh, okay. So most of the thing is like, how do we map or how do we see this new IP vis-a-vis uh, -vis, uh, with the cloud? So I think uh, with the emergence of cloud, one thing has been pretty much clear. Like you know, it's pretty much clear that they are they are here to stay and the public clouds looks like they, they are the one who are emerging as a clear winner and people are moving towards a public crowd and then there are people who who are embracing those public cloud technologies in-house and they want to make their own cloud inside their own enterprises to you know to leverage the same kind of uh, I would say 
leverage the same kind of infrastructure that is available in public cloud. So when we move towards this new concept of IFP, we didn't want uh, to address just one uh, one price. We wanted to be a part of the public cloud as well as be the part of the enterprise's cloud and also participate for the people who want to do the hybrid thing, right? It's partially in the public cloud and partially in their own premises. So the point of uh, network for the new IP was to have a system built in which is available and which is helpful for the customers to either adopt any of the strategies, public, private, hybrid, anything. So one of the things that Swapna was talking about is the NFE. So if you look at our NFEs, uh, like a virtual router, I'll take an example of virtual router. This virtual router is readily available for any enterprise consumption. It's just a URL, you download it and you bring it up in a couple of minutes and there you go. You know which exactly happens the way it happens on the public cloud. But if a customer who is on an enterprise private cloud and wants to move to somebody like Amazon or someplace else, that virtual cloud is, uh, the virtual router is available in the public cloud as well. So he can move seamlessly from his enterprises to a public cloud. Or he wants to stitch the public and the private cloud the same virtual router will be available at both the places. So that's where we believe like that's how we are taking the new IP approach. We want to make it more available for the customers. We don't want to bind them to a certain way of building an infrastructure in-house or out-house. We want to give them a flexibility. Whichever they want to make a move, we should be you know, we should be flexible enough to give them the same flexibility of networking across all the domains they want to move ahead. So that's how I, I look at the new IP being able to map to the cloud. So we are there. That's great, Gopesh. And I think you've answered another question, uh, which is about spending on remote sites rather than the data center. Um, the, the network function virtualization concept allows you to deploy pretty much anywhere, which is what Gopesh said presence in an enterprise cloud in the in the public cloud which is data center oriented but that same function can actually be deployed in a remote location as well uh, all it all you need is uh, an x86 based server so um, this really simplifies deployments even in um, campuses in remote branches which is what uh, what was the what the question was referring to okay Okay, I think something keeps on popping up. Okay, uh, I think there's one more thing. Like uh, again, uh, uh, it's, the question is like, is the new IP capable of scaling it uh, on a cloud-like infrastructure? So, uh, like cloud-like, and that's one of the characteristics. If if you remember, like when Swapna was telling about this, uh, the new IP, the concept behind. So one of the things is scalable. Any system that we are building today it should be scalable. And when I say scalable, it's not like you to keep adding you know one system on top of the other the system itself organically should be able to you know grow as and when you provide more resources to it like a virtual router which can start from a couple of megabytes and scale up to an 80 gig and we have this new version of uh, virtual router which is which will take it beyond 80 gig without you adding another you know kind of virtual router it's it's all logically expandable just like the way you want to work on a cloud. So you want to increase your compute capacity. All that you do is you throw your data onto it and the cloud just caters the capacity. So the similar way, we are building the network systems in the software where you start pushing the traffic and the systems increase their capacity, right? And, and that's how we complement the whole cloud infrastructure along with the new IP. Great, great. Um, I think cloud and new IP, Gopesh, what you're saying is pretty much go together. For for an enterprise to take a full advantage of um, a cloud infrastructure, whether it is local or public, new IP is the key to, to opening that, right? Opening the power of the cloud. Yeah. Okay. And and then, uh, and then in my view, I think this NFV kind of like what we're saying, like the new software world of the networking, it's equally important for any vertical, be the enterprises or the service providers. Although this push initially came from service providers who have been buying these big metal boxes, you know, these proprietary systems, and they were always stuck. 
each time they wanted to grow, they have to buy more of these boxes at a very, you know, at a, at a big price. And when these things started moving in the software, that's where the people started realizing the benefits on the flexibility, scalability, and also at the cost. So this stands true not just for service provider, this stands equally true for the enterprises. And in my personal view, I think because service providers' networks are the whole thing that they have built, you know, the big networks, they're complex. And moving from a strategy of a hardware where it has been there for ages to a software, it's a long journey for them because it requires a lot of, you know, uh, a lot of complexity that needs to be taken away for these hardware-based boxes and now pushed into software and then software strategy works differently as compared to the hardware. So they will move and I think they have compelling enough reason to move but their movement would be slow but for enterprises where they have systems, they would be the one who can take advantage of this NFV instantaneously whether it is on the cost, whether it's on flexibility, whether it's on a new architecture, I think they can move much faster as compared to service providers. But this phenomena will touch both enterprises and service providers. Wow, and I think... And So there's a question on, um, and, and Gopesh couldn't agree with you more on the service provider versus um, enterprise conversation. Um, so folks, in general, this journey is has started. Let me put it that way. And it's, it's not only um, the concept of NFV that will drive this journey to new IP. It is the concept of adopting automation. Um, automation, typically IT teams think I'm going to lose my job because everything's going to work, the whole network is going to come up by itself. But the shift is we want the network to perform according to the business goals of the company. So uh, a, a classic example for uh, to, to talk about um, and you know what, when you have more control over the network and what it can do is um, uh, dynamically having the ability to change the quality of service in a multi-vendor environment. So um, if you have a call happening, a video conference call happening between two employees in the organization, um, and let's say they're very senior employees in the organization, right? And you as an IT person wants to ensure that the CEO of the company gets his or her bandwidth when they're doing a video conference with, with one of your clients. How do you as an IT team ensure that unless you know you are warned beforehand that the video conference is happening at a certain time? Uh, SDN can allow you to dynamically configure the network for guaranteed QoS and bandwidth and allow that conference call to happen with the best quality. But for you to reach that stage, you as an IT team have to develop DevOps skills, the ability to program your network with standard protocols such as NetConf, Python, right? And that is the journey towards the new IP. So is new IP fluid in topology and architecture? Absolutely. You can move your, uh, for example, NFE. You can move your network functions from um, one location in the, of the data center, in the data center to another. You can uh, morph your architecture because automation is an integral part of how the network is being formed. So um, the new IP uh, allows you to um, operate your business more efficiently and it also allows you to react to demands in a much more agile fashion. And okay, this is something interesting which has come. Look, okay, maybe you know, what kind of hardware is like now? Everybody knows that the lifetime of a hardware is to a certain you know they have like three to five years and then they they tend to go. So, but uh, this this thing is really because the kind of workload, with the new workloads or the new, I would say the new data processing which is happening is making very. Uh, specific hardware these days. So the span of those hardware f which has been built for a specific job is, you know, it's shortening up the life cycle of the hardware. So what kind of hardware 
this new IP evolves because the software will need some kind of hardware to run onto. So I believe <coughs> this is a step which uh, industry has already taken forward. Uh, one thing which NFE kind of phenomena has taken is can we standardize all the network services to run on an x86 architecture like because x86 architecture is flexible, proven and the horsepower is getting better and better on it. So the industry has taken NFE as like let's put it on x86 and keep evolving on the software side where the x86 architecture remains the same. We just increase the horsepower with every release but even if that is an old hardware we are still able to port the new software on top of it. So that gives a life, you know, a extended life to the hardware. But at the same time, where vendors like us and the competition who have always been making their own proprietary ASICs, and these ASICs were far better than, you know, in the network performance when it came to x86, what an effort for us has started where we are trying to make you know, deliberate efforts to expose the APIs to our ASIC and give an open data plane so that any software can be ported on top of that ASIC. So efforts have begun and I think in another two years we'll start seeing such kind of offerings coming on the market where you will have a generic hardware which is built on ASICs and that ASICs can be, you know, again, white box or it might come from vendors like us who will expose their APIs and using these APIs you can put any kind of software on top of it. So if you buy a routing software, that box would act like a router. If you bought a firewall software, the box would convert it into software. So I think this is where new IP is going to influence the new life cycle of the hardware. And okay, I think has a real okay. Ma'am, okay, uh, so there's a, there's a sure, sure. There's thanks, Gopesh. So there's a question about um, the spine and leaf architecture concept and how has it evolved for the future. So um, honestly, the spine and leaf architecture. Um, was developed by uh, a gentleman with whose last name is Clo, and that's why it's called the Clo architecture. Some people call it CLOS because it's it's the acronym is CLOS. Um, it is uh, it is a, a very IP centric architecture with an IP control plane, and uh, it is most efficient for large scale data centers. Talking large scale, I mean the size of Facebook, Google, Rackspace, which are catering to public at the end of the day. So service providers um, and, and the likes typically uh, use the spine and leaf architecture that, uh, that is being asked for here. Now, not to say that that is the only way to build a fabric. There are other fabric designs which also have their own advantages. Um, and especially in the enterprise, if you see for small to mid-sized enterprises, um, the number of servers that you have, and especially with virtualization taking over, has greatly reduced. Um, you will possibly from thousand, uh, maybe a thousand server data center to a few hundreds once you virtualize your data center efficiently. In that case, um, do you have uh, an IT team which is very conversant with a protocol such as BGP, which is traditionally uh, an ISP or a service provider based uh, background protocol. You don't need that kind of complexity in an enterprise. So Brocade is uh, the only vendor today who can offer you a choice of choosing a fabric depending on the size of your enterprise. So we can start with a, a very simple, automated, um, extremely efficient layer two fabric and it will suffice for up to 10,000 servers um, enterprises. You go beyond that, you're entering a league of being a service provider, and then absolutely Brocade also has the most automated um, and open IP fabric as well. So hopefully I answered your question about the spine and leaf architecture. Um, and, and just to go a little bit technical, the spine is, is really a location of ensuring that um, you're, you're able to hide all the endpoints from uh, the base spine leaf network. So all the host 
clients do not have to have their IP addresses shared with the uh, spine leaf network. That is your highway, if you will. And uh, the cars traveling on this highway are very efficiently transported from one leaf switch to the other leaf switch through um, a tunnel. And in this case, the most ideal tunnel to use is the VXLAN tunnel. Uh, it allows you to scale. It allows your spines to concentrate just on switching at the outer IP layer, which is the outer header of the VXLAN. And it allows your, your leafs to only be intelligent enough to understand all the hosts that are sitting behind it and be able to most efficiently transport traffic through the network. So to summarize, you have a choice of fabrics. Uh, depending on the size of your enterprise, you could go for a layer 2 fabric or a layer 3 fabric. And there's another uh, you know, question which can hardly plan for a success for SD and NFV. So I think uh, there is no set of, you know, there is no set plan. So there is no step one, two, three, which which we can hand it out to customer and say, you know, this is how you plan for SD, you know, this is how you plan for NFV because every customer's environment or the requirement is very different and it takes a, lot, it takes a while for us to consider all of these factors and then plan, you know, how, do, how they can leverage NFV or how they can build a new architecture or at least enhance the current architecture using technologies like SDN. Uh, so it, it, this, this takes a little while. It takes for us to work along with customers, understand the requirement, the environment, and then see where would be the new plug points. But uh, we have customers who come back and say, okay, I want to build from scratch. You know, I don't want to, a kind of like bolt into thing. I want to build from the scratch and I think that's where most of the customers are taking some initiative. So any new project or any new setup that they are trying to build start with an architecture keeping SD and NFV in mind. And that's an easy insertion point but that's a, a point where uh, the success rate for SD and NFV is higher. Where they are embracing these technologies from the ground up. And mm, as I say like most of the people want to take advantage of uh, NFV instantly. We have one, you know, uh, hosting um, partners, uh, not just partner, a uh, hosting customer here in Bangalore. So they wanted to reduce the cost of their routing and, and the first thing that they did is they used NFV based routers and stacked them into server and start using them and, and got rid of a lot of hardware which was there just to do the same old plain routing stuff. So they started with that link. But we have another customer, another hosting one, and they will be launching their services. They just said, okay, instead of giving me a bolt-in approach where and where I can fit a couple of things, I want to build the whole thing from the ground up. And they are planning the SD and NFE approach for the whole cloud end-to-end. -end. So they're making a new setup and trying to go ahead. So there is no set plan. It changes with the customer requirement and it takes a little while for us to work with them and then, you know, based on their uh, their approach, I would say based on their approach, how they want to address the current project or a new project, we come up with a plan for SD and NFV with them. That's perfect, Gupesh. And I'm glad I think you addressed the next question as well, uh, which is about sharing some use cases of new IP deployments in India. So the cloud service provider that Gupesh was referring to is a, is a very classic example. And um, the nice thing to give you, to give you the kind of savings, um, they had six routers and they moved to one server. And now they have, instead of six boxes, they have one server running uh, their routing protocols, peering with the internet, and um, it's been a paradigm shift for that for that service provider. And uh, now the CEO is so hooked on to network function virtualization. As far as possible, they're trying to virtualize every component in their um, data centers. And if you ask him what advantage he sees with Brocade, he sees um, savings. He sees savings from power, for efficiency, from his abil ability to react to his customers who say, I need a load balancer tomorrow, he can actually bring it up today. So he has 
truly epitomized what new IP can can do for a business. And um, I, I'm hoping that more and more enterprises like that service provider based out of Bangalore will adopt and are adopting the new IP. So, uh, economics. Are there any more questions, team? So, maybe. Over to you, Ashwini. Uh, sir, we have one uh, last question. Okay, this is... Okay, it says each and every location have their own bandwidth based on number of machine. What value addition brocade will bring in this case? So, I'm not sure if I get it. Uh, uh, so question is, when the bandwidth is low, what value does brocade brings in? Or... Uh, do you want to look at this question? Maybe this will, you know, if if you're getting this. Um, actually, I don't see the question, but I okay, will. Let me, I will. Let, let me see if I can just send it across to you. Just. Yeah, sorry about that, folks. No, 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 so it just says each location have their own bandwidth based on number of machines. What value addition brocade will bring in these cases? So. Okay. Um, if we understand this correctly, there's no reference in this question about branch, campus, data center. So, me being in Brocade, I'm going to assume um, it's a data center and for location, I'm going to assume it is um, a, a customer. Now, every customer, when they come to a service provider, yes, have different bandwidth needs. Um, honestly, yes, based on the number of servers or machines as you have written in this question um, to connect to the, uh, to the network. And today, service providers are selling services based on uh, VMs. But I would equate your question to maybe a colo service where an enterprise says, you know what, I don't have a data center, so I want to put my servers in your data center and take connectivity from you. So the advantage that Brocade provides in such a case is to, for the bring up of these type of customers who really do not want to deal with the infrastructure. Um, Brocade's fabric architecture allows the onboarding of these customers within a matter of minutes. And uh, whether this customer is joining with a 1 gig, a 10 gig, or a 40 gig, um, it's, uh, they, they will be allowed to connect to the network within a matter of minutes. And uh, then their ability to connect across data centers, their ability to go beyond a standard 4000 VLAN ID infrastructure, all that can be supported with Brocade. So hopefully I've interpreted the question and answered it correctly. 